والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم بسم الله Peace السلام عليكم Welcome to this episode of the Beauties of Islam We have a website by the way called beautiesofislam.com where you can continue to watch this series because it's quite lengthy have quite a few episodes and you may like to continue and see more about these subjects. One of the things I've been talking about is the concepts of belief and how it puts to rest a lot of the questions and a lot of the confusion that some people have when they think about God, when they think about the creation, when they think about themselves and their purpose in life. We were talking to some extent about, and I digressed off the subjects to some degree, when we were talking about Adam, and we were talking about the devil, we were talking about the angels, we were talking about the jinn. Now, those of you that haven't seen the previous episodes, you'll be like, what's he talking about? So, quickly, we know that Allah exists, and He is one, and He created something called angels from light. He created another race called jinn, and they're like angels in the fact that you can't see them, but they're totally unlike angels in the fact that they have free choice, whereas angels don't. So they can choose to obey or disobey a law in the same way that human beings can. And then the human beings are the last of the creations of a law. Now, we discovered in the previous programs that we were talking about that these jinn who existed before Adam also had one who was maybe like a leader to them, and he was quite um, strong in his worship to the extent that God Almighty had put him in a very high place next to the angels. He was actually next to the angels in his worship until something happened and Allah sent a commandment down because he had created Adam, the best of his creation, and he said, all of you bow down, and all the angels bowed down except Iblis, who was not an angel, but he was from the jinn, so he had free choice. And that's what really happened. And when he refused to bow down, this was bad because he said, why? Why is he not going to bow down? He said, I'm better than him. And this in Arabic is called kibber or arrogance. And only Allah is Akbar, the greatest. It's from the same root, kabara. And I was trying to make that point in our other program. Now, here's what happens when anything in the creation, whether it's a jinn or a human being, it starts to get this arrogance and show off and like you're somebody special, this means you're in competition to Allah. And this is not acceptable to Allah. Only Allah is Akbar and above all things. So this is where the devil went wrong. Now Adam also went wrong because he ate the fruit that he was commanded not to eat. Both of them had made a mistake. One made the mistake of what? Disobeying by not following a commandment. The other one, Adam, disobeyed by not following a commandment, which is not to do something. So the devil is ordered, do something, and he doesn't do it. And Adam is ordered, don't do it, but he did it. So this gives us, as human beings today, to understand there are certain things which you are ordered not to do, certain things you're ordered that you must do. And either way, when you break a commandment, it's a broken commandment. But only Adam was successful in coming out from under it. Why? Because the devil refused to repent until this minute. He still refuses to repent. On the other hand, Adam did the right thing and he repented. And in Arabic language, the word is tawba. Tawba means to go back, turn around and go back, go back. Uh, like you're driving down the street, you know, in your car, and you say, oh, I need to make a U-turn. Okay, I'll go back. This is Tawbah, to go back. Go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go back to Almighty God. He's the one who created you. He's the only one listening to your prayers, and He's the only one you really need to uh, apologize to when you break His commandments. And, of course, unless you have affected people, then you have to also seek forgiveness from them as well. But this is another subject. What we're starting to understand here now is that there is something very basic in all of the creation of Allah. And that's all by His command. And human beings have choices, but we don't have free will. Some of the times you'll hear people say, well, don't you believe we have free will? Well, if I have free will, I'll order this glass to float. Go ahead, glass. Get up. Float. Uh, by the way, don't hold your breath and wait, because it's not going anywhere. 
because I don't have free will, but I have free choice. I'm going to make the choice to pick up the glass, all right? And Allah let my choice work. That's the only reason I can do that. Hmm. So if I don't have free will, but I have free choice, it means some of the things I want to do could happen, but maybe they won't happen. True? Yeah. But whatever does happen is a result of what Allah has is called will. Allahu ala kulli shayin kadir. Allah has the power to do whatever he wills to do. And this is a beautiful teaching in Islam. It helps us to understand and put into perspective what happens around us every day? Many things are happening all the time. When we said, oh, this is bad, and this is good, and this is nice, and this is sad, and this is, you know, a disaster, and this is something fantastic, and this is a catastrophe, and what does so all of this mean? And we understand from that what? It's all in the power of Allah. He's the only one that has this power. He's the only one that's in this total and complete control. And that's always something we look to him we understand that if anything is happening that's good it's from him anything we don't like it's still from him this is all a part of the understanding that we get we can always go back to him and turn to him for whatever's going on and ask for help or whatever we need and this is one of the beauties of islam <laughs> islam is keeping up the pace islam is for every race Brothers and sisters to increase your Learning how to recite the Quran properly Learning the meaning of what we recite Including the ahkam from the verses which we recite Trying to implement what we learn in our daily life would listen to the participants and the guests. Well, take your phone calls. We're going to recite life. We'll listen to your recitation. And we'll correct it according to the rules and regulations which we'll state in each episode. Now, your dream will come true. Will come true. <laughs> We're back and you're watching the beauties of Islam. We've been talking about the concept of repentance in Islam. We've been talking about the concept of going back to God and asking for forgiveness. We've been talking about the concept of understanding why things are coming about as they do. So I think this is a good chance for us to continue that and talk about why do good things happen to bad people and why do bad things happen to good people. And this is definitely what I call the beauty of Islam, is to get this correct understanding. Often we see people that have so much wealth and so much, you know, and they're bad people. And you say, why is he getting so much? Somebody else is a really good person, but he has little, if anything, at all. Maybe he gets cancer and he dies. And we think, how? How is that? Is that fair? What we learn from this is a good lesson because Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he taught us something about this. And he said that there will be two people who will come on the Day of Judgment. And one of them, he will have had everything he wanted in this life. Even when he was about to die, he asked for a feast to be set in front of him and he would get that. The other one, he would have none of the things of the life, nothing he wanted, came out the way he wanted it. Even when he was about to die, all he wanted was a glass of water, but he didn't even get to drink that. Then the one who had everything, he would be put into the hellfire, the Jahannam, like you put a pin into something and you pull it out. And then he would be asked, in your whole life, did you ever see anything good? He said, well, law, he, in my whole life, I never saw anything good. The other one then, that had every, every disaster happen to him, he will be put into the paradise, like you put a pin in something and pull it out. And then he would be asked, in your whole life, did you ever see anything bad? And he would say, no, in my whole life, I never saw anything bad. Because one second 
in hell wipes out any good you ever saw. But one second in paradise wipes out any difficulty. And some of the companions of Muhammad, peace be upon him, they ask him, well, uh, we don't understand it. He said, because nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfectly good. And by the way, nobody's perfectly bad either. And now this means that the one who had everything in this life, actually he was a bad person. Allah did not love him. Allah hated this man. And the man was so evil and so bad, but he did do some good things because nobody can be perfectly bad. The good that the man did, Allah rewarded him in this life because this life is nothing. It is nothing compared to the next life. So he gave him his reward here. So in the next life, he didn't even get to smell the paradise. He, in fact, went to hell. And that's a horrible, horrible destination for anybody. The other man, though, was actually good. He was so good, really, in his heart, a good man. But he made some mistakes. He did some bad deeds. And because Allah loved this man, he let him have his disasters in this life so he wouldn't have the main disaster in the next life. Because, after all, that's the eternal life. And so this man, who Allah loved, he didn't even want him to smell the hellfire, even for one second. So he suffered in this life, but he got the best in the next life. And this explains some of the things that we see happen around us every day, because people will ask you, look, we saw there was a tsunami, there was a you know, tornado, there was a hurricane, there was an earthquake, mudslides. You know, so many disasters happening. There are natural disasters and man-made disasters and, oh, people are dying everywhere and suffering and children and this and that. And why? Because all of this is in the control of Almighty God. He's the one who created everything. He created you and me. He created everything. And he's the one who determines how things will go and then what are we supposed to do about it. How do you react when these things come about? What is inside of your heart? What happens inside of your head? And there's a way you can check this out. Check it out for yourself and ask yourself, how do I react when anything bad happens to me? And how do I react when anything good happens? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us a beautiful teaching. He said, ajib, amazing, astonishing is the condition of a mu'min, a believer. Because only good comes his way. When any of the good things comes his way, he's thankful to Allah, shukr Allah, thank you Allah for giving me these things. Thank you God, I appreciate these things and I'm showing appreciation. But when the calamities strike him, a catastrophes come his way, you know what he does? He makes sabr. He is persevering. He is patient. And it's good for him. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, but this is only in the case of the believer. So think about it the next time you're having a difficulty. How do you react? Because if you're a believer, all of it will work for good for you. The Christians know this as well. They have the verse in their Bible that said, All things work for good for those who love the Lord. So if you truly love Allah, then consider this. Everything is from Him. And everything returns to Him. And in the Quran, He says, Inna lillahi wa inna lahi rajiun. And the return is always back to Allah. So with that, we'll conclude our program and look for you next time right here on the Beauties of Islam. And don't forget to check out our website, beautiesofislam.com. Till next time, peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Islam is peace. Islam is peace.